This idea of creating a foobar theme that used dynamically generated colors to style UI elements based on colors found in the front cover of the currently playing album. Um, this is actually a screenshot of Bubble UPMP, and you can see that for the background of the title bar, it uses the red found in the cover image. And when I tr set out to do this in FUBAR, I found that the get color scheme method was inadequate for this purpose. It returns colors that aren't necessarily found in the image, and there's not really enough information to choose the correct one. So I realized I needed to roll my own, and this is a demo of what I came up with, which is uh, a method I call get color scheme JSON. And what Give Color Scheme JSON does is it returns a JSON array of colors and their frequencies in the image. And uh, it uses uh, the K means clustering algorithm to do this. Uh, explaining that is a little beyond the scope of this video. Um, but what I got going on in this little uh, demo is over on the left, I've got the output of get color scheme JSON, um, every color, and also the frequency that would return for that function. Um, I'm also showing the brightness of that color. Uh, I wrote a little color helper class, which lets me uh, manipulate colors a little easier. Uh, so I can calculate brightness, I can determine whether a color is grayscale or is close to grayscale, I can calculate distances between colors. Um, you know, that is not part of get color scheme JSON, it's just something that I wrote. Um, up on the top, I've got the output of get color scheme, and you can see um, the values that it returns. Um, and then over on the right, I've got a um, just the output of a little um, a little simple algorithm I use to choose uh, kind of the best color um, for. You know, my UI elements. Uh, basically, this algorithm works is that it uh, takes the very first color returned by get color scheme JSON that is not grayscale or too close to grayscale because grays are kind of boring. I, I want to avoid those if possible. And then if that color is too dark or too bright, it will basically go through uh, the entire output and multiply frequency by brightness again, trying to avoid grayscale colors, and then just choose the color which has the, the highest value of that. You know, so real simple, there's not a whole lot of thought in it, uh, but it has some pretty cool results. Uh, you'll see up in the top left, uh, I show the size of the image, and then the time it took for uh, both um, functions to run. Uh, you'll see that on smaller uh, images, Get color scheme is typically faster than get color scheme JSON, but as the image size grows, uh, get color scheme JSON is uh, usually starts to get faster. Not not in every case, but you know most of the time. So uh, I just want to run through some images here and show you how this all works. Uh, you can see the output here of get color scheme is uh, you know it's not bad, but that color isn't really. Uh, in the image like the one that get color scheme JSON returns. You know, here in this cover, um, get color scheme JSON pulls out that purple, you know, perfectly, whereas that color gets coerced to gray in get color scheme. And if you weren't actually looking at the real color values of the image, you might be really confused where that gray came from. You know, my algorithm decided that that purple was too light, and so it shows a different color, which kind of isn't satisfying. But again, you know, you can tweak this algorithm to be a lot smarter or not. And you know, this is just stuff I wrote to parse the the output of get color scheme JSON. <clears throat> Here again, uh, this color that get color scheme returns is not really found in the image, and you have to actually get to the fourth color uh, that gets returned before you think, hey, you know, that color is in the image. Whereas on the left. Every single one of those colors is in the image. You know, get color scheme doesn't always return bad values. Uh, I want to show that, you know, it's 
if you get lucky with the the image, it can return good stuff, but it's it's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, you know, in my testing and looking at you know hundreds and hundreds of images, I found that white and black are the most common colors, uh, or colors that are really close to white and black. And you know, kit color schemes first value you know a lot of the time is going to be white or black and that's not real helpful you know and that's one of the reasons why we really need to return the frequency of those colors as well because then you can um you can make smarter decisions about what you want to show here like the, the algorithm is you know pulling out that red and it, it looks great in my opinion You know, here, uh, I actually kind of like the color that Get Color Scheme returns better than the Get Color Scheme JSON. Uh, it's rare, but it does happen. You know, but that brown is in the image. You know, that's, it's not pulling that color out of nowhere. <clears throat> here again, uh, Get Color Scheme and Get Color Scheme JSON. Uh, basically choose the same color, but you know, this is not as frequent as you might expect. Here, the, the little algorithm chooses the red highlight color again, uh, and it looks great, whereas, you know, Get Color Scheme just returns a dark gray, and you'd have no idea, you'd have no way of knowing to choose the red color because, you know, you have no frequency information. <clears throat> One of the things I wanted to do was choose kind of iconic bands with covers that everybody knows and go through their entire discography so I couldn't be accused of like cherry picking uh, you know certain colors that looked good in my um, algorithm but get color scheme kind of choked on. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these. You can pause the video and uh, look at the values that are returned if you want. Here, you know, my algorithm, it would be nicer if it shows like a, the brighter blue color, but again, it's, there's not a whole lot of thought going on here. Reds are really hard uh, to get right if they're kind of in that orange spectrum and get color scheme returns a, a color that isn't really wrong, but it doesn't look good next to the image. If you style the UI element with that color, it would, you know, it would not look great. Again, you'll see the get color scheme is returning a a gray value, which doesn't really match up. I hope this gives you a feel for how uh, the new the new Get Color Scheme JSON method works. Uh, and how powerful it is for, you know, pulling colors out of the image and, and uh, allows you to do pretty cool things with them. So, thanks again for watching.